All right, so in the last video, we talked about some statistics related to burglary and home invasion, and we started to talk about different ways that you can defend your home against these threats. We're going to continue that discussion today, so let's get to it. Throughout the course of this video, we're going to be discussing various products related to fortifying your home against burglary and home invasion. The links to those products will be in the description when you shop through those links. It costs you no more than it normally would, but it does help support the channel, so check them out. Now, first off, I want to post a disclaimer relating to the title of this video. Obviously, zombies are not real. It's a very implausible post-apocalyptic scenario. However, it is a good metaphor to understand societal breakdown and the hordes of people who might be banging on your front door in the case of a grid down SHTF scenario. And indeed, as the saying goes, if you're prepared for zombies, you're pretty much prepared for anything. And this is no truer than in the case of home defense. And once again, I would encourage you to utilize the fullest extent of the law possible to defend yourself with firearms. For those of you who think that just because you have guns, you're 100% safe, then you're making a very big mistake when it comes to the art of war. You should aspire to avoid a fight at all costs. The fight that you can avoid is the most victorious of all. Hence the preventative strategies talked about in this video go beyond simply responding reacting with your firearms training. And I've made this video universally applicable so it also pertains to those countries who don't have the liberal firearms rights that are possessed in the United States of America. Now in the last video we left off on the topic of home surveillance so I'm going to post a link to that video here that you can go and check out before watching this one. So on the topic of home surveillance, one of the security systems that I've used through a Canadian winter no less in minus 35 weather, if you live in a cold place you're definitely going to want cameras that can sustain that sort of drop in weather and have the proper ingress protection rating which means that they're going to be able to sustain you know the rain the winds the hail the snow and the cold temperatures and maybe even the hot temperatures depending on where you are but what i found is that the amcrest uh, surveillance systems are a, a very solid professional yet affordable home security system that is made to be very durable now the great thing with amcrest and i'm sure many other uh, surveillance companies have this as well is that there is a cloud-based surveillance system. That means the footage from your cameras is going to be stored in the cloud. Now, I know that might be a privacy infringement for some people, but it's not like you're putting it in your bathroom. You're putting it at your front entrance and your driveway, etc. But what this is going to do is if somebody were to come in, break into your home, find your uh, digital recording device, that you use to record the cameras, smash it or steal it or whatever, destroying your surveillance footage of them breaking into your home. This is going to ensure that before they can do that, that footage is still going to be stored in online servers somewhere else, which of course you will still have access to to hopefully prosecute that person down the road. Another thing you want to try to do with your surveillance cameras is have some surveillance cameras within your home. Obviously, you want them in places which are not going to be overly infringing on your other family members. But it's important that you, you do that while you're in the home. Because when somebody burglarizes a home, let's say they're wearing a mask to hide their face from the camera on the outside. Most of them are not expecting there to be cameras on the inside. So they might be more likely to get complacent, maybe take off the mask for a bit. You might just be able to get a better ID on the suspect if you have more cameras in the inside of the home because you got to think if they're looking for stuff and if their vision is impaired in some way by the mask that they're wearing they're going to want to take that off to look a bit faster this is going to allow you to get perhaps those snapshots you need of the person in order to identify them at a later time and a lot of the cameras nowadays are fairly discreet some are motion activated some you can program to be triggered by movement in the house if you don't have any pets it will send you an email that there was activity detected at your home there's even two-way or one-way audio security systems nowadays that you can talk to people who are in your house at the time and let them know that you can see them and that they've been recorded to the cloud and that the police are coming etc and that they better get out there's a lot of innovative technology nowadays, which is within everybody's grasp. So I'd encourage you to take the time to get a home surveillance system. Now, one other thing I should mention about home surveillance, in my personal opinion, a wired system is more reliable. Based on what I found, uh, not only are the Wi-Fi cameras gonna be sucking up 
some of your bandwidth, having a wired system is just more reliable. Yes, it probably takes 10 to 20 times longer to install if you want to do it properly. And there is a greater risk that somebody is just going to pull the cord down. They're still a lot more reliable. They're less prone to dropping in the case of a weak signal. Or if there's some issue with your Wi-Fi, then basically all your security cameras are for naught. So I'm going to post a link to some Amcrest options in the description. They have a variety of cameras. I would say that you could probably get away with uh, 720p quality. That would be enough to be able to visually identify somebody from within 20 to 30 feet. If you're wanting to cover an area which is much greater than that, maybe out to 50 feet, then you're probably going to want a 2000 pixel resolution just so that you can get those sharper images so you can accurately identify people. You can go higher than that, but the higher you go in resolution, you got to remember the higher your bandwidth if you're on Wi-Fi, and of course, uh, the more it's going to cost you. With your home surveillance system, you want to put the monitor where you're spending most of the time in your house. Now, some surveillance systems are through the internet or over the cloud, so you can access them from anywhere. But it's nice to have one dedicated monitor somewhere in your house that you can constantly see what's going on around you. There's nothing more empowering than having that full spectrum awareness of all your access points into your home just at a glance on a screen. Now this next point is something that should be obvious to most people, but a lot of people simply don't lock their doors. Simply locking your doors. If you have two doors that a person must enter, lock of both of those doors the more doors you can lock the more barriers you can put between your stuff and that thief the better and also you want to lock your doors when you're in your home make sure especially at nighttime that you're locking your doors even in broad daylight because it's going to be in those situations when a person has scoped the situation out and a lot of times now people are opting to do the home invasion because it ensures that they're going to be able to find something quicker and the person is not going to be able to call the police so they can get in and out of the home without having to do any break and entry and of course if it is a female person or if it is a male in some instances they run the risk of being sexually violated as well there's a lot of horror stories about home invasions with deranged people and i always encourage women in particular when you get home lock the darn door behind you it's not that hard people live in this mickey mouse fantasy land where nothing could ever happen until the unthinkable happens and it's too late get into the habit lock your damn doors now if you have first floor windows what you want to do with those is make sure that they are reinforced somehow now you could have some removable crossbars on the windows that are in accordance with your fire regulations, but that might not be as aesthetically pleasing to the wife. Now, if you wanted to reinforce it beyond that, there are different uh, security window films that are gonna reinforce the durability of that glass. I'll post a link to those in the description. I plan on doing a video in the very near future with regards to the application of the security film on Windows, so stay tuned for that. Security film is a relatively low cost and not very visible way to make your weakest points of your home far more secure. If at all possible, avoid doors that have windows on them. Having a door that's solid and not capable of being broken through the window is obviously the preferred home fortification. But be very cognizant of these places. Make sure if those windows have locks on them that they are actually locked. A lot of people simply don't lock those windows. If you have a garage that's built onto your house, make sure that the door from your garage to your house is locked. I know it's probably not going to buy you a lot of time. It's only going to take a dedicated burglar a minute to pop that lock with a sizable crowbar, but it's something. There are also locking mechanisms for garage doors, although these aren't going to be that practical for people who use their garages a lot. A very low cost enhancement you can make that's going to increase your door security probably at least threefold is going to be putting three inch screws into the receiver to where your door latches onto. This is a very quick and easy fix that's going to make kicking in a deadbolted door much, much harder to achieve. Another tried and true deterrent is the night lock security system. What this does is it creates a barrier on the bottom part of the door. So as long as you have really good hinges, 
basically how it works is you bolt the platform to your floor that contains a rail that holds onto this piece of metal which is basically going to work with the hinges and the deadbolt to create almost an impenetrable uh, door it's going to take a lot of force to be able to kick through a door that has a night lock security system or the equivalent built onto it another thing you want to do in addition to hiding your stuff uh, around your house like i talked about earlier is being discreet about the possessions that you do have inside your home you know if you have to move something into your home that's very valuable do it in a discreet way that not everybody on your street or everybody in the neighborhood knows you're doing moving high priced items in at night or through entrances which are not so visible to everybody would be able to minimize the glass house factor another important thing is lighting lighting is so incredibly important the more well lit and open the line of sight around your perimeter the better off you're gonna be don't feel bad about leaving your exterior lights on if you don't have motion activated lights which are very good also but they're not 100 percent reliable either criminals and people of malintent in general they hate the light not only metaphorically speaking of course but i'm talking figuratively here they don't like to be seen your first line of defense is utilizing the psychology of the public eye light up your house to the best of your ability in a way that's as cost effective as possible of course and it's going to drastically minimize the risk of home invasion especially if you're not at home you can have your lights on a timer it could even be randomized to give the illusion that somebody is home it will drastically reduce the chance of break and entry Another useful tool for both grid up and grid down scenarios where the power might be out is a solar based motion detection light. You can get these lights under many different brands. The basic idea is that they charge by day and because they're motion activated lights they're not burning constantly throughout the night and they're only activated when they sense movement. Most of them achieve adequate brightness. Remember that light is the ultimate offense against the dark side. Now another thing to do is very simple. You know, the, the most obvious is the least obvious, they say. And if you are leaving your home for a couple days, leave an interior light on in the house. Leave a, a TV on, even, running in the background. It doesn't hurt to leave a radio on. It gives the illusion if somebody were to come to the door, if they heard something going on inside, because they can't 100% ascertain whether or not somebody's home. The same goes for having a car in the driveway. Make sure you have some kind of vehicle somewhere. You want to create the illusion that you're home when you're not home. The more you can do that, the better off you're going to be. Another thing you want to do is get in good with your neighbors. Make sure that they know that you got their back and they got your back. Make your presence known in the community as somebody who is a hard target and isn't to be messed with. You know, keep your yard nice and clean and respectable. Be that upstanding member of your community and you will be less likely to be screwed with. Now, indeed, you're going to also want the means to defend yourself throughout the house. I would suggest that you have some kind of weapon or means of self-defense to defend yourself within every room of the house because you never know what room of the house that you're going to be in when something happens. Now, of course, you're going to want to do so in accordance with your municipal, state, or federal laws, and in a way that's going to be inaccessible and safe for children. Certain countries might be more liberal in their permission of allowing you to discharge a firearm in your home in order to protect yourself more so than others. But even if you're not allowed to possess firearms, or if the storage laws of those firearms don't permit you instant accessibility, you still should have some means of defending yourself. You can get these flashlights that are in the shape of bats. They're relatively cheap. You can scatter a few throughout your house. They come with a lanyard, so it would be hard for somebody to pull it away from you. And they're also very bright, which would blind an attacker. It's important to remember that in the event of an altercation in your home, you do have a supreme home field advantage in that you know where everything is in your house and the person who's entering your home probably doesn't unless they're a professional criminal and have thoroughly surveyed your residence in advance of the crime. Another thing I would recommend people keep around, and this is more so for grid down situations, is sandbags. 
Sandbags have ballistic stopping capability. A couple of them stacked back to back will stop high caliber munitions. Now for these, you can use sand from your yard or if you have a sandbox for your children, make sure that that's fully stocked. In such case that you need to use that sand for your sandbags for the purpose of barricading or to act as a defensive shield against enemy fire. As an aside, another thing you most definitely want to have in your home in several places is fire extinguishers. Not only can they be used to disorient and strike an attacker, but they'll also help protect you from arson and they're just generally good to have around for obvious reasons. You also want to be very aware when somebody comes to your door. It's not uncommon for home invaders to use some sort of bait or some person who might seem less harmful, perhaps even a child in some instances, have been used in order to get into a household. In the most extreme cases, it could be an individual who we'd commonly perceive to be less threatening, like even a child or a young female or an older female who may be masquerading as soliciting some sort of services. Don't be fooled by somebody with a clipboard and a uniform. Just be very vigilant. There's been many documented cases where one of these supposed less threatening individuals comes to the door and there's a couple other guys you know maybe around the corner or something like that and once the doors open the criminals enter the home and perform the home invasion so in addition to using a peephole windows surveillance system stuff like that make sure you know who you're opening your door for before you open that door now if you have a big enough house and you have the money to invest you might want to look into safe rooms or what's also called panic rooms basically this is your castle keep and it's going to be hardened to things like break and entry and home invasion. Now, some of these rooms are designed to be underground or even in a secret location with a secret entrance. So it's certainly something to look into if you have the money to do so. And if you wanted to kill two birds with one stone, you might want to make something underground that could double as some sort of fallout shelter or emergency bunker. Another way to store your personal valuables is something that many people are familiar with and it's wall safes, wall safes hidden behind pictures. Now, of course, if you do have a wall safe, I would encourage you not to put it in a master bedroom or even in the living room. If at all possible, put it in a kid's bedroom behind a cartoony poster or something like that, something that is not very obvious. Especially if you live in a well-off home, chances are burglars are going to be looking for the wall safe. Especially professional ones who know what they're doing. So don't keep that wall safe in an obvious place. Now on the topic of dogs for home security and as an early warning system, there's no doubting the effectiveness of a well-trained dog to protect your home. However, they are a major responsibility and they require a major life change, something that not everybody is willing to commit to, which is why I don't pay them too much attention in this video. Undoubtedly, if that's within your reach, do it. Get yourself a dog, and I'm talking about a real dog. I'm not talking about one of these ankle biter dogs that doesn't really do much for you. If that's your preference, then fine. Personally, if I had to invest in all the things that are required to have a dog nowadays, I would want that dog to have some sort of functional value. Additionally, they're also good for bugging out. Now, of course, all good things are not without their drawbacks, particularly in an SHTF situation. A noisy and unmanageable dog can also be your downfall. It can also be a big giveaway that can be heard for a long distance in the deep silence that might characterize a post-collapse world. In addition, these dogs are going to have to be kept alive with dog food and, of course, water. Meaning that that's one more life form that you have to make provisions for in your SHTF planning. In addition, these animals can be tricked, they can be baited, they can be poisoned. There's many ways around a guard dog, so it's not a 100% foolproof method of defending your home. And normally when you're gone for long periods of time, usually people are putting their dogs in a kennel or they're coming with you wherever you're going. So a watchdog can be useful for preventing home invasion and for guarding your house while you're at work, but certainly not while you're away for long times and they could be a potential liability in a grid down situation. Now, in the first video, I talked about using signage and various forms of subterfuge, which is basically the principle of misleading your enemy into thinking that you're perhaps more powerful than you are in certain places or weaker than you are in certain places. Basically, it's the art of deception in war. So even if you say don't have a dog, putting a beware of dog sign out is just one more deterrent one more level of anxiety that's going to be added on to the person who's trying to break into your space. You could even go one step further 
and have some sort of false doghouse in the yard. And you can use that doghouse for some other purpose, like storing something that you might need outside, just so it's not a total waste of space. Now, if you are in a bug out wilderness scenario, it's always good to have some sort of tripwire or some kind of early warning detection system in order to notify you of those four legged or two legged hazards. There's a variety of ways to do this. One way that I've found that works really well is to use eye hooks. Put a few eye hooks in your bug out bag. They take up pretty much no space at all. You can string some fishing line through there and you can hang some bear bells or some rocks in a can or whatever you want on there to act as an early warning detection system. Now, if you do have a lot of money to spend and you're just worried about bears and other four legged predators and you maybe do a lot of camping in the backcountry, you would be wise to invest in an electrified bear fence. These have been proven to be effective against wildlife and in the very least will buy you a little bit more time to respond to these threats. Now, if you find yourself out on an acreage or where the entrance to your property is far away from your place of residence, then you can invest in a wireless driveway alarm. How this works is that there's going to be some sensor, which is at the foot of your driveway, which is going to wirelessly transmit and notify you that somebody is on your property. So I hope this long video has been useful for you today. It's very important above all else that you protect your castle and the family that you have within it. Don't forget you can show your support to the channel by following the links in the description to purchase some of the items that we talked about within this video. Now, heaven forbid something happens to you or your family because you didn't take some simple precautions and spend maybe a few hundred bucks in order to really bolster your defenses and fortify your home against these potentially dangerous and violent trespasses against your property. You can never go wrong with the investment in home security. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.